Hi everyone, it's James here. Welcome to another video. So this is sort of a response really to John Heaton who recently uploaded a video on his 12 favourite opening tracks for albums. I say it's sort of a response because John did that video because I've been threatening to do a video on that theme and then I didn't do it. So John was sort of doing a response to a non-existent video of mine and I'm now doing a video to his response to my non-existent video. So my original plan was to do a top 10 favourite opening tracks from Beatles solo records. Now I'm not going to do that. That's not what John did. John did just a general one. He did his top 12 so I'm also going to do my top 12 as well. And uh, so let's see what we've got. So a few surprising choices here. And uh, we'll start with this one, which is uh, quite a recent addition to the collection. This is Bob Dylan and Infidels, and I am obsessed, obsessed with the opening track, Joker Man, which when I first heard it, I immediately loved it. You know those tracks you get, those songs you get where you don't need to grow into them, you hear it once, immediately loved it and I've been listening to it non-stop now for months. I've been listening to it last thing at night, I just think it's a wonderful song. Not sure what it's about but a wonderful tune, a really gutsy vocal performance from Bob, wonderful melody and I just love it. it I mean it would come higher up the list except it's quite a new addition to the collection so ask me again in six months time and uh, maybe it will have risen a bit higher. So this next one I can hardly believe that this is in my list because this is an artist who I've never been into but in the last year or so I've been dipping my toe into his works and I found his debut album a few months back and I've been really enjoying it particularly the opening song which I totally love so this is Bruce Springsteen greetings from Asbury Park NJ New Jersey his first album of course and the opening track Blinded by the Light which I um, I knew the Man from Man Earth band version which I don't think is a patch on the original Bruce's original version is brilliant fantastic rolling lyric very stream of consciousness musically brilliant it was a song which he recorded to go on the album uh, really at the last minute because the record company didn't think that there were enough strong tracks on the record so he went to the park with his guitar picked his guitar up he took a rhyming dictionary with him to the park and he basically just came up with this song, just improvised this song. Quite abstract, but then it all comes together in the chorus. Absolutely love it. And uh, that might even make a Bruce Springsteen fan out of me. We'll have to see. Now I couldn't leave this one out because it, it just made such a big impact on me in my younger days, when I was in my 20s, when I was a student, in fact. I can still remember exactly where I was when I first heard this track and when I first heard this album. I was at a friend's house at a party. It was a summer's afternoon. Everybody else was in the garden having a barbecue and I was in my friend's bedroom rifling through his CDs, as was my want, as has always been my uh, habit. I pulled this record from his collection. This is Yes 90125. I hadn't heard it before. And of course the opening track is Owner of a Lonely Heart, which is, a, I mean, in this country, in the UK, it's a Radio 2 staple now, it's really overplayed. But the production on that record just blew me away by Trevor Horn and Steve Lipson, just so incisive. Such a techno pop masterpiece. The track is brilliant, it's got a wonderful vocal performance by John Anderson, great searing guitars by um, Trevor Rabin and uh, I couldn't leave that one out because uh, it just blew my mind when I first heard it and it is a song that I go back to quite a lot and I'm reading Trevor Horn's book at the moment as well which is uh, which is great fun. Right, this next one, one of Elvis Costello's finest works, at the start of side two, or phase two rather, you have the song American Without Tears, which is my favourite song from the record and my favourite Elvis Costello song, Full Stop. But the opening song of uh, phase A is equally great. The song Brilliant Mistake, Love Lawn accordion part in it, great um, T-Bone Burnett production. Caught Elvis at a very dark time in his life, I think. It's quite a confessional record, and um, that song has this melancholy kind of sound. It's one that always um, always tugs at my heartstrings, so uh, couldn't leave that one out. This one, 
Tom Petty into the great wide open the opening track from this the opening song from this is learning to fly and again I can remember distinctly hearing this for the first time I was in the back garden of my parents house in Wales I come home for a holiday I bought the record on CD I'd loved full moon fever but um, some of the songs on that record are a bit played out free fall in the opening track from that record is definitely played out I don't really ever need to hear it again but um, Learning to Fly is, is not as played out really, and I think it's a better song. Fantastic sounding, chiming guitars. A great way to start the record. It really sets the pace, sets the scene for the album. Just an all round great song, Learning to Fly. And this next one, uh, an artist who I've been going back to a bit recently, I used to listen to him a lot back in the day, not so much now, but I've been revisiting his records. And this is one which I've been looking for for so long, I only found a copy of it last year. And um, so I've been really getting into this again. This is Neil Young and Crazy Horse. Everybody knows this is nowhere. And the opening song from this record, Cinnamon Girl, possibly my favorite track by Neil and Crazy Horse. It's just got this incredibly crunchy, crackly production. It sounds like they're making it up on the spot. Great atmosphere. You really want to be there with them as they're playing. It just, it sounds fantastic to this day. And uh, great riff, great tune, great melody. Wonderful way to start. One of Neil's strongest albums, I think. So yeah, Cinnamon Girl, gotta be in there. Between, and this one, had to include this, another song which blew my tiny mind back when I was a youngster. This is Pink Floyd and Piper at the Gates of Dawn, their first album from 1967. Production by Norman Smith and the opening song from this record is Sid Barrett's Astronomy Domine, which fades in with the sound of Sid's disembodied voice reading off the sound or the words of all these uh, constellations. Comes in with a Morse code, bit of Rick Wright keyboard and then just goes into the Probably the first prototype space rock, pop rock song laid down the framework for bands like Hawkwind. Very spacey, very psychedelic. I imagine the psychedelic versions which they used to play around the clubs of London were much more mind-bending than that, but I think Norman Smith did a fine job of capturing that on tape. Great song, launched the Floyd on their decades-long odyssey and still a favourite to this day, one that always blows my mind when I hear it. She wanted to test her husband, she knew exactly what to do. This next one, Kate Bush, wonderful artist, and I need to spend more time with her again. I think uh, I have neglected her in recent times. Certainly need to make a video about her, I can't believe I've never done that. But um, she's an artist that's been there forever, so it seems. I mean, she's been there ever since I was in, in school, you know. This is her third album, Never Forever, uh, which came from 1980. And the opening track from this is, has long been a favourite, of course. It's, it's uh, Babushka and um, an incredible lyric all about a guy who's he's worried that his partner or his wife is having an affair and uh, it descends into this tangled, quite disturbing story. But of course, Kate sings it and performs it in this deceptive, sparkling voice. This is the album where she started making use of the Fairlight synthesizer and it has this late night vibe with a bit of Rose piano tinkling away. It sounds really magical and enchanted. Great chorus. I think this album really is where she started to really come into her own and find, find her own voice. So that's so uh, Kate Bush, Never Forever and Babushka. Now this next one is an instance, that rather depressing thing that you sometimes find where you think the first song that an artist does is the best song they ever did. Salisbury Hill by Peter Gabriel I think is the finest song he wrote as a solo artist and uh, to this day it still, it still makes me feel emotional when I hear it. There's a lovely backstory to the song. He wrote it basically in response to him leaving the Genesis machine. He decided to become solo, strike out on his own and he wrote this, this great happy sad song uh, about himself really stepping out into the morning air and climbing up uh, Salisbury Hill and um, having this conversation with himself really coming to terms with a, a key moment in his life I think and he manages to turn it into something quietly epic really it's a pop song it's quite acoustic but there's an undertow of something going on it's got a great Bob Ezrin production very imaginative and um, Really, the song or the record is just like a breath of fresh air, really. It never ceases to amaze me. Peter was able to come out of the gate with a song as strong as that. Done, 
Right, this next one, I'm going to have to cheat slightly with this one because this album starts with a segue, so there's two songs joined together, and even though they are ostensibly separate songs, I do view them really as one piece. This is XTC and Skylarking, and the opening track is Andy Partridge's. It's Summer's Cauldron, which goes into Colin Moulding's song Grass, and uh, the two songs are very much joined together. It, the album starts with the sound of a summer's day, insects buzzing, and uh, once the two songs come to an end, at the end of Colin's song, Grass, you hear the insect again. So they are very much tied together. Todd Rundgren famously sequenced the entire record before the band had even met him. He knew exactly which songs were going to go where. And uh, these two songs just get the album off to such a wonderful start. They really do set the tone for the record. Very Beatlesy, very 1967. And uh, I've just always loved, well, I, I mean, I love the entire record really, but those two opening tracks are fantastic. I've recently done a video on the channel of Ross Goodall actually talking about my favourite um, Andy Partridge song, so I'll, I'll link to that down below if you want to hear more about that. Every other sentiment, an now this one could have come at number one, but I've decided to play my nostalgia card really for number one, so we'll go with this at number two. From the Steve McQueen album by Prefab Sprout, you have the incredible Farron Young, extraordinary abstract lyric set to this immensely atmospheric Thomas Dolby production. It's a hair-raising piece really. Gets this album off to a spectacular start. The band performance is incredible on it and just such atmosphere really. And, um, you know, this record is, is an absolute classic of British pop music and Farron Young really showed quite early on that Paddy McAloon was an extremely interesting and original songwriter. I should say I've left quite a few tracks out. John did a also ran list, which I haven't done, but I mean, I should give a, a shout out to Pulling Muscles by Squeeze, which means so much to me. You know, and then you've got things like Bridge Over Troubled Water by Simon and Garfunkel. I mean, there's there's so many, but I couldn't I couldn't leave out this one. This is the Motors, and the opening song of this record is Airport, their big number two hit single from 1978. One of the first songs, if not the first song, really, that made me fall in love with pop music after Mull of Kintyre, of course. Heard this on top of the pops. That great yearning piano keyboard opening. Andy McMaster's masterful vocals and lyrics commercial chorus and just the, you know the big long fade out with him screaming airport at the top of his lungs that brilliant piano solo in the middle which consists of these um, arpeggios these alternating arpeggios brilliantly done it's a great song i mean you know it's a bit of a guilty pleasure in a way airport by the motors it's just one of those songs that's been overplayed i suppose it's a radio 2 staple still here in the uk but i mean i love it and uh, it takes me right back to my earliest days really of being a, a fan of uh, music and pop music so had to have that in at number one that's airport by the motors so there we go that's my 12 so hopefully you enjoyed that and uh, i shall be back soon for another video take care I'll see you soon.